Okay, this is part three, I guess, of 7M Weatherby um, load development. Um, part two just talked about powders, different types of powders, reloading manuals. Um, <clears throat> this part here talks a little bit more about the, the Weatherby cartridge in in itself, I guess. Um, so different different websites and stuff that you guys can look at um, getting data off of. There is um, there's a website called LoadData.com, I believe, and then there's Reloaders Nest. There's a whole there's a whole bunch of different websites you can pull data and resources from. I have signed up to a couple of them myself, just for the just for the knowledge and stuff um, for the articles that they publish in there. I wouldn't listen to, and no disrespect, but I wouldn't listen to anything that Chuck, that Chuck Hawk has to say. Guys, yeah, I don't have anything to say about him. A lot of that information there is just opinion. It's not based on fact. But you can find out a lot of stuff on the internet, and you always have to double-check it for yourself and make, and verify that it's, that it's true uh, before you start using that data and stuff. So the more that you get into a hobby, uh, the more research that you do, um, the wiser you are to it, and um, 7 mm Weatherby was just the starting point for me. I load for the 22250, um, the 4570 government, and it's it's been actually a lot of fun for me. It's saved it saved money in the long run, and it's become a, a pretty fun hobby. So it does save you money. I mean, now comparable rounds. You can go out and buy Hornady Superformance or, or whatever in 22250, and it's pretty cheap. But when it comes to reloading stuff like 7mm, you're paying $140 a box um, in northern BC for this ammunition. And I've priced it out with all the powders, and I've done all the, the math for it, the division, multiplication, and it still cost me $5 a round to shoot this stuff. So it's not like it's my planking rifle. It is my hunting rifle. And the way I look at it, you know, I spend, I probably spend $3,000, $4,000 a fall every year hunting. Um, and if I can save a little bit by reloading myself, it's probably, it's probably a bonus. So, and plus I get uh, a load that's tailored to my rifle and uh, I know what I'm shooting. I know what's coming out of that rifle. So anything else that I can think of about 7mm Weatherby, um, the loading for it. I talked about the shoulder being a little bit different. The shoulder, or maybe I didn't. The shoulder in a Weatherby rifle. I'll just grab a cartridge here for you guys and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we'll just go to the Remington. I'll show you a little quick diagram here, what they have in the book for it. So you see the shoulder here on the Remington. You can see that in the book. I don't know if that's going to focus well or not, but it's a very it's a squared off shoulder in the book here. It's a, it's an angular shoulder, and when you look at the Weatherby rifles, they don't have they don't have that angu angulated shoulder so much. They call it a radius shoulder, so the measurement that they give uh, is a radius measurement. It's R.130 and then R.151. So it is a rounded shoulder. I don't know if you can see that in the video very well, but it's more of a rounded shoulder than the um, than the Remington is. The way that it was explained to me, it was part of their proprietary um, cartridge development, I guess, for the Weatherby. They said that's where they got their velocity from because it was a more smooth transition than using an angular um, shoulder on their cartridge. I don't know if that is true or not, um, but it does boast... Uh, 200 feet per second velocity advantage over the Sharp and Hart and above the Remington. The Remington stole the Weatherby's Thunder. Apparently the Weatherby did come out first from what I read, but it was so expensive compared to the counterpart of Remington that came out a few years later that nobody bought the 7mm Weatherby. They went with the Remington. It was a lot cheaper to shoot. And it was it was just about the same results. So um, that probably would have been me. I probably wouldn't have spent the money on a Weatherby, but because it was German, and my Opa was German. I'm pretty sure that's why he went with the Weatherby. And he liked the look of the rifle, the stocks. He was a carpenter, and 
he was a, a master craftsman when it came to um, cabinet making and fine woodwork. So I'm pretty sure that drew that caught his eye a little bit more as well with those with those uh, Monte Carlo stocks on those old walnut rifles. Um, I haven't loaded really any other weights uh, for the 7mm other than 154s and 160s. Um, I'll show you I'll show you a couple of these bullets here that I did pick up for it. A bunch of my reloading tools and stuff. But um, I'll show you a couple different um, bullets that I have, or that I were, that I was loading for the 7mm in my videos here. Let's zoom in a bit. Zoom out a bit. So these guys here, the 150, um, 150 TSX, never did get them to shoot very well. And then there's the 154 SSTs. The enter bonds are empty because I put them back in the box. Uh, the 154 interlocks I tried I had fairly good results I guess with them until I went to the SSTs and air bonds um, they shot a little bit better those are my CCI 250 Magnum primers uh, Federal 215 and there's the Grand Slam bullets and the 164 bolt tail spire points which I really loathe right now because I couldn't get them to shoot my rifle worth the, worth the shit so uh, 140 partitions, 150 partitions, 160 partitions, and I believe that's just my reloading tools in there, like case trimmers and stuff like that, a bunch of sharpies and a bunch of reloading tools and stuff. So, um, yeah, basically, load development. You've got to try different stuff. Don't be scared to try different stuff. Um, learn as much as you can with it and have fun, but. Yeah, don't be scared to, to go out and shoot 30, 40 rounds out of your rifle when you're first trying to come up with a load for it because it is a really, really neat um, chamber to work with, a, a really a really nice cartridge to work with. It's very safe. Um, the pressures that it can take, um, really, really high pressures, but once you get into load development for it, kind of finding the ballpark that you're supposed to be in, um, for whatever reason, the Weatherby likes speed. That's all I can really say about it. It, it really likes speed, and the, the ultra-slow-burning powders, I would really recommend trying out Retumbo, um, IMR7828, and even IMR4831 was a really good performer. So if you guys are looking for powders, those are the three that I would start start to look at, I guess, as far as as powders go something to get into and if you're not having success with one powder switch your primers or um, switch your projectile to something else it might work a little bit better in your rifle and I'd, I'm pretty sure with the new rifles if you have a custom setup a lot of those rifles are dialed in with your scope um, anyways like if you get a Huskama um, scope or whatever they're already dialed in I'm not I'm not really about high precision and stuff like that like long, long range shooting I've I've made lots of um, long shots just with a fixed power scope and just a variable power with a normal reticle on it and I don't know if you really need I guess it's kind of neat if you're doing target shooting but I try to keep my shots within 500 yards if they look like a little speck in the scope I don't pull the trigger if you can't see them with the naked eye that well and track them it's really not fair to the animal anyways if you're hunting um, anywhere that they can get into the bush anyways I guess that's just my that's part of my beliefs but um, yeah, this rifle will definitely do it. Um, I've shot elk out to 500 yards with it. Um, I've shot coyotes out to 500 yards with it, and it performs really well um, for a rifle in its class. Um, that's for sure. So, <clears throat> anyways, if you guys are um, if you guys are interested in loading for it, those are the powders that I try. And um, yeah, I'm I'm not kidding. I can tell you. There's an elk right there that I, that I got. Pretty neat neat looking elk there. That came from the 7mm Weatherby um, two years ago, or last year. That came last year. So that was one of them, and then that was the, the guy that I shot on the river. So, I mean, it does perform well. That was a really long shot, this one. It was, um, it was just over five, and this one... This guy was pretty close. <laughs> he was he was about 30 yards screaming his head off at me. So those are the ones that I've got in my room that'll fit. They're not the biggest elk ever, but um, <clears throat> definitely fun. Two of the more fun ones. 
they're both bugling there and that's basically i guess for reloading for me that's why i do it um it's part of my family's it's part of my family's history and it's it's brought me a lot of joy and that's why i do reloading aside from the fact that i can't find factory ammo any anymore for it so but that's part of it for me and um you gotta have a reason for doing it but um as a hobby it's something that you can get better and better at and you can always learn something about so if you guys have any questions about any of this stuff I, I hope I helped a little bit um, if you have any specific questions about powders or or things to try like seeding depths and that kind of stuff or whatever you might have you can feel free to drop me a comment in the comments section below or you can send me an email or or whatever you guys feel like but anyway I hope you guys enjoyed the videos and um, yeah, uh, you guys take care. Thanks for